You're now tuned into the uh, Real Rap Radio Show on Down to Hot Radio. I'm your host, Wallo Archer. I'm my special guest on the line. Yes, introduce yourself. My name is Errol Vass, and I am a digital marketer, originally from Canada, now living in China. And I serve as a marketing director, working with a brand called High Spec Tools and Mamba Grinders. But what's more related to your show is I'm currently also helping an amazing Canadian musical artist that goes by the name of Howells promote his music. So I thought today would be a good opportunity to talk about ways that up and coming artists can market their music. Nice. I'm glad everybody, I'm sure everybody will want to hear more about it. So what is your first tip on the ways they can market their music? Tip number one. So marketing is never easy, but I think it's particularly difficult in the music industry, and especially for up and comers. So tip number one is, and you may disagree and other people do, but quantity over quality. And usually I would never say this, but in a world of online music marketing where videos are so heavily influential, it's very easy to get swept away and go unnoticed in the sea of content that is being created nowadays. Now, if you can get someone to listen to your song on YouTube, like whether they like it or not, after they listen to your music, the YouTube algorithm is going to suggest more of your content, which puts you in a good position for more listens and views. And that also holds true on other platforms. So I'm not saying produce a bunch of terrible music. What I'm saying is quantity is really going to help you instead of having just like one good track or one good video. Very good information because some artists, they rather put up minimum, but the ones that they do put up is the best five instead of having more than five because it's not to them the best representation of their business or music. Exactly, you know, so I mean, you do always just want to put out your, your best work. But I mean, nowadays, with just the amount of content that's being created, it just isn't enough. And I think a really good example of this, do you remember uh, the, the rapper Little B? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he came out with like literally hundreds of music videos and they weren't the best quality. It was usually just him walking around with his friend filming, but he was able to come out with so much content that it helped him. And not all of his music was was really good, but he, he just kind of, overcharge his content and that really helped him excel. So I think that's a great example. Gotcha. And then with YouTube with the algorithm, you said once they listen to one of your songs, it suggests more to them. Yeah, yeah. And especially so if you have more than just a couple songs on YouTube, if you have a bunch of videos and there's it's more likely that YouTube is going to suggest your music. So just having that quantity is really going to help. And what would tip number two be? Number two, this is a pretty basic one is leverage Spotify. So probably the best way to gain mass listeners and traction is to simply sign up for a Spotify artist account, submit your songs, and pray that you get picked up on a Spotify playlist. Or instead of praying, you can contact Spotify's curation team directly and request to get on these playlists. And the good thing about that is when uh, the listeners are listening to some mainstream songs or going through playlists, if your song gets thrown into that shuffle, there's a really good chance that you're going to be put in front of a larger audience than if you were just on Spotify by yourself and not on these playlists. Great, great tip. What would you go with tip number three? Number three is, I'd say, do what you're doing now, but scale it. And what I mean by that is you just need to increase your output. So if you're reaching out to 25 people per day, you know, check out my music. Here's my, you know, reach out to 100. If you emailed your local radio station for a play, reach out to every radio station in your state. Or if you've collabed with a couple artists, why not collab with, with 50? So whatever you're doing now, just increase your output. A big part of marketing is scaling. It's, it's doing what you're doing, but amplifying it. So whether you need to just work harder, more hours, or get people to help you, whatever you need to do to do this, scale. Great advice. And then the next one? Number four, do some market research and leverage the success of other artists. So a good way to go about this is to first find artists that are near, that are at a similar level in their career as you. Um, you can kind of base this off of, you know, how much content they've put out or how many social media followers. So reach out to these guys, do some collabs, and then kind of look at who's a little more ahead in their career than you are and kind of reach reach out to those guys and try to work your way up and up and 
that's just a really good way for you to start working with artists who have bigger followings than you and starting to leverage their followings to get some eyes and some ears on your music. And a really good example of this is uh, Little Peep. I was watching his documentary a couple months ago and I remember one of his friends saying it seemed like the artist that he really looked up to, it would seem like just months later he'd be on tracks with them. And that's kind of the route that he took. He just collab with people and keep kind of working his way up the ladder. I think that's a really good way for any artist to gather a, a good following. Any more tips? Yeah, I got one more. And that's to focus on building your infrastructure. So build your team. And whether you're marketing in music or marketing in any other industry, marketing takes a lot of work. So artists focus on making music, creating a product, and it's in a very competitive marketplace. So you'd be very smart to set up a team. So ask a friend or pay someone to run your social medias for you. Find someone to do emails for you, such as like emailing radio stations or a podcast. Get someone to book gigs or contact other artists for you. The more people you have helping you, the more that you can focus on creating your music, creating content, and that's really important. So if you don't have money, you're going to have to ask close friends or people you can count on. And if you have a bit of money to invest in your career, contact some marketing agencies in your area because a lot of agencies have a good Rolodex of contacts in media and could help you get the exposure that you need. What would you want to mention next? Well, those are my the five tips that I have for musicians. And I just wanted to give five very actionable tips rather than, you know, your generic kind of try harder tips. I think these are five tips that anyone listening who is pursuing a music career can implement today. So I think sticking with these five is smart for an up and coming musician. Now, how long have you been in a business? I've been in digital marketing for about six years. My main experience has been in industrial products, B2B, and I've also always had been interested in music. So I do like to help out with music as well marketing themselves whether that's you know whether you're working and marketing for a company or working and marketing for a personal brand i mean a lot of the characteristics remain the same okay now being a digital marketing what would you also focus on so would you focus on say linkedin or uh, facebook or ig as well as helping artists use those platforms or would you only stick to the music platforms like spotify iTunes, Google Podcasts, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, it's always important to be working on socials. Uh, that's, you know, for companies, B2B companies, and for mu mu musical artists. The one thing to consider, though, is social media organically is, I won't say it's dead, but it's declined very much so, to the point where if you're on social media, it's almost a pay-to-play game 100%. So, if you want people to see your posts, if you want to actually make use of the content you're putting on social media, I strongly recommend paying to boost posts and to sponsor posts and just to get more eyeballs on it. I think right now for Facebook, the organic engagement rate is 2%. So basically, if you have 100 followers, only two of those followers are going to even see your post organically. Then out of that two people that saw your post, you just hope that they engage with it. So organic reach is very, very low. Uh, so I recommend paying for boosting. So when you post it on Facebook, Instagram, and those things, it's not as effective. And 2%, I didn't realize that. So that's such a low, 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 low percentage. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's really low. And it kind of makes sense because that's how these platforms make their money. It's all in advertising. Really, the product for these social media platforms are the people themselves and their customers are advertisers. So especially now, especially in 2021, it's a pay play game, the social media world. You definitely think it's an artist's benefit to boost and to pay for sponsors and run those type of campaigns. It's definitely because it can get expensive, but you think the return rate is better as far as eyes on it? Oh, 100%. And you know, once you start paying and boosting your posts and more eyes on your content, then your organic reach will increase because especially if you're boosting content that people are actually liking, they're going to come to your page and maybe they see the rest of your content and they'll start following you. And then your organic reach will go up. But especially if you're a new artist trying to boost, 
uh, yeah, sponsoring and boosting your post is definitely beneficial, and I, I would recommend it. All right now, here's um, kind of a, a different direction. You got Google Ads, and you also have Yelp, and you could pay Yelp and Google. Would you recommend either of those? Yeah, I mean, it depends what you're you're using them for um let's say if you are a musical artist with a competitive name for instance the musical artist that i work with in canada his name is howls and there also happens to be a classical musician who went by that name so when people are searching up this band's brand name howls it makes sense for them to pay for his band to kind of be at the top of the search rankings or else people are just going to find the classical musician. So it really depends on the competitiveness of your band name. Another situation where you could use Google Ads or Yelp would be if your band is open for booking. So, I mean, let's say you are in the downtown Denver area. And when you want to target someone who's looking up bands to book in downtown Denver, using Google Ads, you could get yourself to the top and yourself more gigs so i think it would really help for for live shows and as we close out where can they find you at on social media and learn more information about you and your company you can find out more about me at my website www.errolvast.com that's e-r-r-o-l-v-a-s.com i can also be found on linkedin and uh, yeah if any of your listeners would like any free advice or any help marketing themselves i am more than open they can send me a message and i would be definitely interested in hearing their story and helping out where i can and final thoughts before you go marketing is never easy and i i think it's particularly difficult in the music industry especially for up-and-comers it's emotional because musicians pour their hearts and their souls into their music and they don't even know if any ears if anyone is ever going to listen to it. So put in as much effort as you can, follow my five tips and keep going, keep putting out content and that's the path to success. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great information, thanks for calling in today. All right, thank you very much. My pleasure.